Hello, welcome back to another episode of Restoration Passion. And uh, this will be the first of what we're going to be doing to help keep content coming to you guys. It's going to be a series of very short videos. The thing with the in-depth long videos is they take a long time to edit. So we're going to be doing these short videos just to bring you guys a little more. What we have here is an M4 A3 Sherman behind me. This Sherman is very unique and one of our crown jewels here at Battlefield. This is the only Sherman that came back from the Pacific Theater, more specifically off the island of Iwo Jima. This Sherman was there for the flag raising. So this is just a little teaser video and then there'll be much more coming about from our Iwo Jima Sherman, so stay tuned. Behind me is basically the pack for the power drivetrain for a Sherman tank. Uh, regardless of the variant of Sherman, typically the transmission section and final drive is all interchangeable. And the reason we're doing this is we had a leak in the front end, so we are doing a multi-purpose mission here, and we are disassembling and resealing the whole entire front end. Concurrently, we're doing a track pad change, so we have fresh track pads. And then the most important item is with the nose off the Sherman, this gives us a chance to fit the, the flame grip tank for our flamethrower. So very briefly, I'm just going to describe the flow of power. This section here is the gearbox. This is what contains all the different gears that you shift through. So we have the engine at the back of the tank. And then you have power drive coming out of the engine. A drive shaft runs through the center of the tank up to the front. So the driver will be sitting right here and his gear select lever is right next to him. So flow of power essentially comes out of the engine into this section here into the gearbox. You have your gear selection. Drive comes out of the gearbox and then into this section here. <clears throat> so from the rear Essentially, the driver's right here. Then power goes into the midsection and then out to the final drives. And then this is a stick-driven tank. So you have two brake bands either side of the outgoing drive. So essentially, when the driver pulls one stick, it just applies the brake on one side or the other. To stop the tank, he pulls both sticks. Moving around to the front side, you can see a very detailed shot. You can see a very detailed shot of the inside of the nose of a Sherman. So this is a pretty rare shot, not many people get to see. But essentially, once again, drive comes out of the gearbox into this plate here, and then out to either end. And then again, your steering and brake bands right here. This is the section of the transmission we had to reseal. So we've cleaned it up, buffed it up, and manufactured a new rubber seal to prevent oil leak. And then we'll double seal this with a high-grade RTV. This section bolts into the nose of the tank. So this is the front end of the Sherman that you can see from the outside. Now this whole entire section from inside here all the way back to the gearbox is an oil bath. So it's not pressurized and your oil level, you can even see the line there, the oil level sits about this high. And then once the transmission is spinning, it's actually throwing oil all around the transmission. This section of the front end shares its oil level with the gearbox. So from inside the tank, the driver tops off oil in the gearbox and it moves through the galleys into the front end. So we're at the front end of the Sherman and then power drive goes out to your final drives, which is these two sections here. Each one of the final drives has an output drive spline. So one of these will be coming out of the final drive into the center and each of these are your final drives. So continuing on with the flow of power, once the center of the transmission is inside the nose, power comes through this output shaft here. This output shaft is linked into the final drives through this section at the side and then power is transferred out to the sprocket. So once again, the nose of the Sherman, this whole entire front end is full of oil or half full of oil. And a lot of you may think that's a weak point of the tank for several reasons. But one, if this section takes a hit and then the tank drains oil, that could be considered a, uh, a mobility kill if the front end loses oil. However, 
This section of the whole entire transmission, final drives and center was designed with oversized teeth and gearing and they did testing where one of these Shermans could drive up to in some cases 100 miles without fluid in the final drives or the center of the transmission. So whilst it might be considered a weakness, it was designed to move to a rear area even if there was no oil in the front section or the gearbox. <laughs> shot of the front end of a Sherman without the nose or the sprocket section and this is what it looks like. Looking into driver on the right there, bow gunner on the left. So this whole process of pulling the transmission, separating all the components and resealing it has taken us here at Battlefield maybe about two weeks. I say that because we are being very thorough. That being said, I've read accounts and post-action reports from Iwo Jima of maintenance crews separating transmissions on the beach under fire within a 24 hour period overnight. So one of the strengths we all know of the Sherman is the industrial simplicity, so quick change, um, changeable parts. So Shermans that had damaged front ends, they were changing them out rapidly overnight in the rear areas. So here is a little teaser. This is an M3 flamethrower, mechanized flamethrower. And this is a very rare piece, but that's it for now. This is just a teaser, stay tuned. One thing I do want to bring up is the opportunity that with the front end off the tank, we are taking advantage of the accessibility and the tank roof for the mechanized flamethrower is being installed with the front end off. Stay tuned for more.